ANC's National Executive Committee is expected to meet today. They are expected to discuss the upcoming January 8 statement to be delivered by party president Sir Ramaphosa. The party's 109th birthday celebrations will be held virtually this coming Friday, but with so much going on in the country, such as the corruption charges against Secretary General Ace Mahashule and criticism over the vaccine rollout, is the birthday celebration the only thing that will be discussed? Let's discuss this with political analyst Sandile Swana. Very good morning to you. What should they be discussing today? Hi, Sandile, can you hear me? Uh, Jay, ah. um, the, I think we, 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 we can look back. Go ahead, Sandile, we just lost you for a minute. Go ahead. Should I continue? Yes, please. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so there are the issues that need discussion. I mean, if you look at the previous three statements, um, this being the fourth uh, uh, public uh, uh, statement of the eighth for the ANC. So when you look at the very first one uh, addressed by Sir Ramaphosa, he talked about pandemics at the time uh, in January 2018. And the pandemic that he discussed was the HIV pandemic, which is which has remained out of control, we lead uh, the world in terms of HIV infections in uh, uh, South Africa. And at the time, he promised that 2 million people more would be added to the antiretroviral programs. And then there was the pandemic, the epidemic of listeriosis at the time. It's actually quite upfront. But last year, in 2020, the climate change issues were there, and the trade wars between China and uh, 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 USA were prominent. Today, to, the, to add to his initial discussion of pandemic, he has to add COVID-19, he has to add the economic uh, pandemic as well. So, and then lastly, the issue of organizational renewal in the ANC and the reconstruction of the capital stage. Those are the key areas that need attention right now. Okay, and how will those issues be tackled? Because obviously what we've seen throughout this time is the gross, disgusting corruption within you know, certain members, uh, many members of the ANC. How is he going to be dealing with that and how is he going to be tackling the, the unity issue? We constantly hear how, how bad it is, even though he said in the past that things are absolutely fine. And the fact that the cops, the judicial system is going for the big boys, the ace machashulis. The, the issue of corruption needs a sober uh, approach. Bear in mind that the corruption that we're talking about, even the one that involves uh, uh, Isma Fashula, if you like, goes back to 2014. Uh, it's not corruption that happened recently. So these are cases that have been in the system for a long time. So you cannot deal with these issues as if they are recent developments that an emergency has just break, broken out. What you do need to do, which initially I think Sarah Ramaphosa tried to explain to people, is that focus on rebuilding the uh, institutions that are supposed to control corruption. One of the valves that was open for the floodgates of corruption to open more widely was the closure of the Scorpions. Mm -hmm. So the gap that was left by the Scorpions need to be closed so that there is a system that actually deals systematically and methodically fairly uh, without any rush with corruption in South Africa. So and and Sandile, I mean, the you know, also to, to lead by example... Uh, to lead by example would be a good start as well, wouldn't it? I just want to ask you, because we're running out of time, about these statements by Kasatu that ANC needs to demonstrate that it can lead society. Do you think they'll be able to do that? And, and also these claims that ANC is not in charge, that actually the business sector is running South Africa. I mean, it seems that the grip on, on any sort of functioning, functional country is not happening. Yes, I think uh, Kosato has got a case and they've contributed, by the way, a hell of a lot to the collapse of state institutions and not leading by example themselves. Uh, it, it is true, I mean, we have to accept, and the judges have made this known, that uh, when big business starts sponsoring candidates, sponsoring uh, political campaigns and so on, 
the capture, the issues of capture, particularly if it is done without full disclosure of who is sponsoring what and for what reason. Uh, then state capture follows. The fact that our uh, COVID-19 is not funded, it is clear sign once again that indeed this government is captured by big business. It is not running for the interests of the people. And mm. uh, I'll stop there if the time is short. Okay, Sandile. Swan, good to talk to you. Thank you.